Hey there, my name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and today we're going to be walking through building a basic polyphonic synthesizer using only PSP modules for Voltage Modular. All of these modules we'll be using here today are included in the PSP Ultimate Modular Collection, which contains everything from core utility modules to creative effects and voltage processors, as well as the PSP Ephemerizer Synthesizer, which we'll be using as the kind of heart and soul of these patches here today. Now, if this all sounds really complicated and like a bunch of gibberish, don't worry, because this video is meant for beginners. If you're not already familiar with the core ideas of modular synthesis, we'll be walking through everything from the ground up to build these patches that you can save and tweak to make your own unique sounds. So with all that said, let's hop into Voltage Modular and get started. To get things started, let's go into the library and search for the FMRizer synthesizer, which is what we'll be using as the brain of this entire patch. So we'll drag that in and we're ready to get started. Once we've got this in, if we press a key, nothing happens. So we need a couple more modules in order to make this output some sound to get started with our patching. Back in the library, let's search for ADSR and we'll grab the PSP Poly ADSR. Now this acts as not only our envelope, but also our amplifier. So it's two modules in one, which makes things nice and easy and just helps keep things a bit cleaner and easier to follow. Now, to make this into a basic subtractive synthesizer, we'll find a PSP poly filter. So we'll search for poly filter and drag that on in here as well. And we're ready to start wiring this all up. In order to wire this up, we'll need to use the right connections. And in voltage modular, we have both mono CV sources and poly sources. And in this case, these are poly modules. So we'll be using these poly sources here today to get things going. First up, we're going to use the poly pitch to send the pitch information to the first oscillator of the fMRizer synthesizer here. Let's change this to maybe a saw wave by just moving the waveform selector here. This way the filter is going to actually have an effect because a sine wave and a filter doesn't really do anything. Now, we need to send this out and we need to get it to the ADSR, then through the filter, and then to the master output. So we'll send the output to the input of poly ADSR here. This is the VCA section. We'll send the poly output into the poly input of the filter, and then we'll send the mono output of the filter to the mono output jack here, which is the main output. Now, if we play a key again here, we still don't have any sound, and that's because we need to wire out the gate. So up in the poly sources, we'll grab our poly gate, feed that into the gate of poly ADSR, and if we give this a play again, now we've got a functional synthesizer. Now we've got the basics, but this patch is just not all that exciting. So let's add a envelope to the filter. We'll hold Alt and drag Poly ADSR to create a duplicate. We'll space these out a little bit just so things are a bit more clear. And now we'll grab another instance of the Poly gate by clicking on the Poly gate jack, grabbing a new output and feeding that into the gate of this second Poly ADSR here. Now, in order to modify the filter, we'll need to send the CV out of the envelope here into the Poly CV in of the filter. And let's just up the attack so this is a bit more obvious. If we play a note here now, we'll hear that filter open up over time. This is one of the most basic but important principles in modular synthesis is using CV to control different things. This can be anything from a filter to a reverb or just about anything in between. Now, we've built a basic subtractive synthesizer, but I want to introduce some FM. So I've changed the ADSRs here just to be open and I've opened up the filter all the way with no resonance. And I've set this first oscillator back to a sine wave because we're gonna do a basic sine wave kind of bell FM patch. To create some FM inside of FMRizer, we'll need to send pitch into this second oscillator. So let's grab a poly pitch output here, drag that in, and now we'll send the output of this oscillator into the FM input of the first oscillator. Now, if we give this a play, we've got some basic FM going on and we can trim the amount of FM using this trim knob here. And that's just a basic sign. And you can hear as we increase that, we get more FM. Now to make this into a true FM synthesizer, we need to change this to be an operator, which is nice and easy to do. We'll grab a poly ADSR here, hold alt and click to duplicate that and we'll drag this down. Now we'll go up to the poly gate here, wire the gate into this, and then we're going to take the output and remove it and wire that into the input of this poly ADSR. Now that we've got that wired up, we can shape the envelope here. So I've added some attack, decay, and change the sustain. So we'll hear this FM swell in and then pull back over time. From here, you could repeat this as needed by adding more poly ADSRs to create more operators. You could route this in any way you want to create different algorithms. You could even introduce a second FMRizer and wire them together to create a full-on modular DX7 type setup. 
Now that we've got this basic patch put together, let's add a couple of effects just to make it a bit more interesting. Back in the library here, we can search for a PSP spring. And we'll drag that into our cabinet down here. And we'll search for a PSP delay as well. And drag that in. Now, we've got our filter feeding to the output, so we'll unwire that and feed that first into our delay. Now, this is only one mono output, so we'll feed it only into the left mono input. By the end of this, though, I want to create a stereo signal. So to do that, we'll feed the left mono output to the left mono input here, and we'll do the right into the right. Now that we've got those wired up, we'll wire the left mono output to the master left mono output and the right to the master right output. Now we could tweak these settings. We'll make a nice wide ping pong delay. We'll filter this out just a bit. Maybe add some decay to the spring reverb here and drop the mix of both of these just a touch. And we should have a nice pingy FM synthesizer with some delay and a nice spring reverb. And that's really all there is to making a basic patch. From here, we could go up and save this to our library to save this patch to call up later, or you could even save these as individual cabinets, meaning these individual rows that we could call up later, which is a great way to help build up your patches faster. Now, to change things up a bit and make this patch a bit more spicy and just demonstrate the flexibility of all of this modular stuff, let's turn this into a four-voice polyphonic subtractive synthesizer with some analog-style drift. To do that, we can delete this poly ADSR down here because we're not going to need it. We're not going to be doing any FM. We'll grab the poly pitch here and send this into all four of these oscillators. And then we'll change these over to saw waves. So we'll go to the waveform selectors and find saw waves for each of these. Now that we've got our saw waves selected, we'll wire the outputs of all of these oscillators into this first poly ADSR's input because this is our amplifier stage. The second one is controlling the filter, as you should remember, and we've got the spring and delay mixed all the way down here, so we should just be able to hear four saw waves coming out of the synth. Excellent. Now, let's add a little bit of drift. To do that, we'll go back to the library and search for a PSP poly wobbler, which is a pretty interesting module, and we'll hold Alt to duplicate this. So now we've got four different CV outputs. Poly wobbler is one of my favorite modules because it's designed just to add a bit of instability and movement to everything. So we'll wire these CV outputs to each oscillator. So we'll use the plus for the first one and the minus for the second one. We'll use the plus for three and the minus for four. Now we'll drop the range down quite a bit. We don't want too much drift. We want just a little bit, you know, just to keep things relatively subtle. Let's drop the filter frequency, open up the attack, drop the sustain down a bit somewhere around there, open up that decay, maybe add just a touch of resonance, mix in the delay and mix in the reverb. And we should have a pretty nice drifting analog style patch. Once again, from here, you could save this to call up later as your kind of analog synth style template or start experimenting with different connections, maybe implementing some FM, stacking some FMerizers, adding more modules, adding more modulation and doing whatever you want up until the point where your computer just can't handle it anymore. And I think that is what makes this so fun and so exciting to explore and keeps things interesting, not only for basic sounds, but also as a really creative sound design or audio mangling tool. And that's really all there is to it. From here, you could experiment with different FM routings. You could start adding more modules. You could start wiring the CV in unconventional ways just to see what happens and hopefully have some fun along the way. The PSP Ultimate Modular Collection is available now. And if you want to check it out for yourself or find more information, you can find that on the Cherry Audio Store. For more information on all PSP's products, you can head over to PSPAudioWare.com.